Film photography is back. Forget about the fancy mirrorless systems with auto eye detecting birds and planes or whatever else. Forget about your DSLRs, exchange them all because the only way to look cool on the streets now is to have a film camera. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration for now. You can see in social media such as Instagram and TikTok, there's a growing boom for film cameras. Now there's several reasons why that's happening, but does this mean that we are rejecting the fancy new technology, expensive new technology? This video came about for me because I was at a wedding. I just took a picture of the bride and groom signing at the desk and that's when I invite everyone else to take photos. And it was quite a moment for me because there was a set of about four people and the youngest had a Polaroid camera. She had instant results and sure, I've seen some of the pictures, they were technically problematic, you know, with colour tones and sharpness, and, but none of that mattered because they all, a lot of those photos got, ah, from the bride and groom and the guests because they got a photo straight away. And the, the groom actually think that's an amazing photo and he, and he put it in his pocket. Now that symbolises something really important, doesn't it? That the tangible aspect of having a photography product straight away, that's quite far away from my digital mirrorless cameras here. So I take them on XQD cards and then I put them onto my computer and then I edit and then I post them on the internet or send them to the client. There are simpler ways to do it. You can use your mobile phone to upload the photos and edit on that and send them. It'll never be as tangible as having a Polaroid. And then there's a young lad there. It looks like he's got a 35mm camera and it'd be interesting to see what results he got because the light behind the bride and groom was quite strong and they were in shadow. So I used flash to fill in. So the quality might not be there, but I say quality, but what quality are we looking at here? Are we looking for technical quality with perfect exposure? Will that 35 millimeter film have a certain look that my cameras can't recreate? My first thought was, why aren't they just using mobiles? Because you know, when I was a kid, I loved technology, what well, I still do. But this is kind of the opposite. So what's happening in popular culture now to bring back film photography? Whenever technology advances, such as cameras or music, I think of the revival of vinyl now and how popular that is. It keeps on growing every year. But why is that? We can get all our music now on our phones instantly. So why are we going back to these analog retro ways of experiencing the world. Retro basically means nostalgia. Nostalgia is a very powerful emotive tool. We romanticise the past with rose tinted glasses and it probably wasn't as good as we think back of it now but it's romanticised so therefore it'll always be cool. It also is the case that celebrities have been seen using film cameras now as part of their look or I don't know maybe they just love film photography too. <laughs> it goes along with a lifestyle choice and whenever celebrities are seen with something, that product becomes popular. It's also the case that we have screens for everything on our phones, our cars, our cameras. Everything is electronic and kind of does everything for us now. So going back to my mirrorless camera, which has eye detect, which I'm using now to film, to make sure my eyes are in focus. It tracks the whole time and changes focus to suit. But as technology advances, the photography purists could say, well, it's actually taking away from the fun and the art of photography. There is something in that. When your camera or technology does everything for you, what are, your place in that becomes less important. So with analog, you're in complete control. Sure, there is a tiny bit of electronics in there, but you're in control of everything, it's manual. The whole mechanics, you know, it's very intrinsic. You have to wind it on to the next photo to take. We are pursuing something more real that feels a better experience than technology and electronics can give us. It's strange, as when digital cameras came out, Kodak went bankrupt. They were in competition with film cameras, but that's not the case anymore. There is much a place for digital and film photography. This is my dad's Minolta from the 70s. He passed on to me and this was my first camera that I started using. And I'd always recommend photographers to start out using film 
whether at college or just for yourself, because it does really put you in touch with the art of photography, the mechanics, how it works, the chemical processes, how we actually make an image with an external device. But then DSLRs came along and it was just so much better. Well, it felt so much better. You could have instant results. You could see what you're doing. The process was a lot quicker to get your work out there. There were so many advantages. But interestingly, I've developed my own editing style. They have a slight old vintage look to them. So lower contrast, light and airy. So basically, I'm trying to recreate what these film styles used to do. And that was the whole popular thing of Instagram when it first came out. Basically, it was recreating the, the looks of all the different film types, and it still does now, and it's still popular. I enjoy using Instagram too, for that reason. The presets are really good. It can take a flat image and turn it into something more romanticized. So then why am I using expensive digital cameras and then turning them into something, a look that I could have got with my film camera. And that's, it's a really interesting point because I see it as the best of both worlds. So I've got the technology to get the photo in the first place. The biggest advantage of mirrorless cameras is the electronic viewfinder. You can see exactly what you're getting as you take it. There are light meters inside this so you can see what you're doing, but generally, you know, it's kind of a risk. But that's also the fun of analog photography as well, is the risk and excitement of not being able to have limitless photos. You have to be thoughtful with every photo you take. Young people on TikTok make little videos about the process of photography. You know, you see them loading the camera and what type of film, what lens they're using. So the process is the fun part of film photography. I've actually seen videos where we haven't seen the results of what they've actually taken. And that's something when you have mirrorless cameras it, it's not as obvious that you enjoy the process because it does it a lot for you. It's very electronic and sophisticated, which is great. I'm a wedding photographer and that's, that's essential. It takes a lot of pressure off me in that way. It'd be interesting to see if people who used film photography before digital, have they gone back to it too? Or would they be like, well, no, the digital is so much better, so much more practical and easy to use. And then of course, like I was saying, Film photography is flawed. Technically, it's difficult to get right. In film photography's imperfection is its beauty. You could say modern cameras are too perfect. Like with Nikon's mirrorless system lenses, they are ultra sharp, incredibly sharp. But I would say the modern lenses are quite cool and clinical and nowhere near the warm and vintage style of a film camera. Could that be true, that this is more of a tool and film photography is more of an art form. If someone was to say, oh yeah, I'll show you my digital photos, or I'll show you my film photography album, which one are you more likely to be interested in seeing? It's also that with film photography, you have a product at the end of it, something tangible you can touch. I mean, I have a photo of me here when I was a toddler, and yeah, if this was a digital photo, it would probably stay in my phone library somewhere, not really be printed. It's rare that I actually print out my work now because of the cost of it and, well, what do I do with it? <laughs> it's very popular for people to digitize them. Now there's a big contradiction for you, isn't there? Because if you're digitizing something that's analog, then why don't you just use your digital camera? Because you'll have to edit that scanned image of that photo to make it look like how it looks to you in real life. And then of course you might think, oh, I might improve it in this way and that way. I'm not sure what the answer is to that really. I'm kind of in two minds. So this is my only photo book that I've made for my own work over the last two years. That's been for my pleasure. And I really enjoyed the process of it. And it's fantastic to see your work in print. And it took a lot of work. I had to have a few reprints of this done because as you see on the screen, it doesn't work on the prints. And it wasn't that expensive, but to be honest, I haven't really looked at it 
much sense. It just stays on my shelf. I mean, it makes a good coffee table piece. So there's a lot to consider when you're buying a film camera or a digital camera. So I've had a look online to see how easy it is to get an SLR camera. And yeah, sure, you can use the usual channels of eBay. So digitally, they call it full frame, which is the same size as 35 millimeter film. And digital frame, which is the same size as 35 millimeter film. And digital full frame cameras are expensive. So you can get something like this, a Z6 full frame camera used for about 900 pounds. And that's second hand. If you want a new one, well, they could be anywhere from 2,000 or 3,000 pounds. And that's a lot of money for someone just starting out to buy a full frame digital camera. And that's without a lens. So the lens is, you know, like you can buy a 35 or a 50 mil lens, about 500 pounds. Then you have film cameras. So you can get a reasonable quality one for about 150 pounds, something like a Canon or Minolta or Pentax. And that come, usually comes with a lens as well. And that's a lot of difference compared to a digital full frame camera. But then you have the ongoing costs. So it costs about eight pounds for a 35 millimeter roll of film. And then you have to have it developed, which you can have it quite cheaply done, even at retailers. Or you can have it sent off for a professional developer. To, that costs about 15 pounds. That's still nothing compared to the initial cost of a digital full frame body and the prices are changing quite a lot with the popularity of film photography i think the cameras will become more expensive because they won't be available so much but the developer of film will become cheaper hopefully because more brands and companies will jump on the bandwagon of popularity of this wave and then of course you can get medium format cameras which are even better quality than 35 millimeter and they're at a good price now as well I like the idea of the combination of a manual and analog looking camera, but with the practicality of digital. So something like the Nikon ZFC. Once there is a full frame version of this, I'll be really excited to try it myself. Leica, one of the most famous brands of cameras you can get, still make film photography cameras, but they come at a cost. They're about to release the Leica M6, and looking at the specifications, it doesn't look like it does anything more than any other SLR film camera in the area where you can doctor and Photoshop and airbrush photos so easily on your mobile now. Film photography represents something more truthful as it's less manipulated, more natural in conception. It's great to see film photography coming back and it does have a romantic edge to it. So if I was a camera brand, I would start making SLRs again and really jump on this renaissance of film photography. And like most things with popular culture, will it just be a phase? And it'd be really interesting to see where this goes with people starting out in photography and going back to film photography. I mean, that is the kind of the renaissance of art. Things coming around again and become more popular, but they always develop into something new. Have you started using film photography again or never used it and really want to actually try it now? Let me know what you think.